All right, let's go ahead and start here. I'm going to be working out of Lightroom today because that's primarily what I use for a cataloging program. Um, all of the techniques that I'm going to be using today are going to work in either Lightroom, Aperture, Photoshop, or the program as a standalone. So don't be afraid to use this, use all of these techniques that I show you with any program that you like. Lightroom is just my preferred workflow, so that's that's typically what I like to use in these webinars. It's nice and it's easy. All right. So I've got my first image here. And the reason why I chose this image is we're going to be talking about some of the some of the idiosyncrasies of working with perfect portrait. And this image is not by any means perfect and it's it's definitely not always the best example to show in the sense that it doesn't it doesn't recognize facial features automatically. So I want to talk to you about some of the some of the things in Perfect Portrait that you can do to make your images look better, especially if the program itself doesn't automatically recognize your your people in an image automatically. And this is a problem that we get a lot when people when people talk about Perfect Portrait, like, oh, I put an image in and it didn't recognize where the face was, or it didn't recognize where all of the facial features were. So I like to use this image because it's it's kind of so so. In that, in that realm. So you guys can actually see something that might be a little bit more similar to the images that you're putting into Perfect Portrait. Now let's go to Edit In, and we'll go to Perfect Portrait here. And I'm going to edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustments. Now the way that Perfect Portrait works, just really, really quickly, is it goes in and it looks at your image and it finds all of the faces in your photo. And then in that face it finds the skin, it finds the eyes, it finds the lips, and it finds the teeth. And then if they're not smiling with teeth, it'll just find the lips. Um, and then it places this green box around the face, and it places a baseline amount of adjustments. Now, when you when you look at the image right away, it's it's automatically changed a little bit. Her skin softened, her eyes have brightened up, her teeth have brightened up a little bit, um, and the the skin tone has evened out a little bit. It's not quite as red as it was earlier. So these are kind of the, the automatic adjustments that Perfect Portrait places on your images. Now, we want to go in and we want to edit any of those changes, and we want to make sure that the program did a good job of selecting the eyes, the lips, the teeth, and the skin. So to do that, we'll just click inside this green box. Now really quickly, if you're going to be using Perfect Portrait, in the top left-hand corner of the preview, this is where your tool well is. And the tool that we have selected right now that's automatically selected when you open up the program is called the Face Select tool. The Face Select tool, if you're using an image with multiple people in it, you'll go back and click on the face select tool to choose another person in your image. So I just want to make sure that people understand what the terminology is. This is the face select tool. Now when we click inside the green box, it zooms in and it actually swaps over to a different tool called the face edit tool. Now that we've zoomed in, we can see the control points here that are placed over the eyes and the mouth. Now in this image here, it did a pretty good job with the eyes, but it did not do the best job with the lips. This will work universally with any image that you want. So if you have a photo where it didn't, it didn't select the right, the right eye, didn't select the right teeth, it didn't select the right lips, whatever it may be, you can always move these control points around. So I'll just click and drag the edges of the mouth out so I can get all of the mouth there. And then I'll click and drag the top to get the top lip. And then these two are the teeth selectors. And I just want to drag them underneath the top lip and above the teeth. And then we'll drag this one above the bottom lip and underneath the teeth. And now we have a nice mouth selection. Now the eye selection is pretty good here. I don't need to do anything. Now just in case this happens to you, and I know it probably has happened to people. The little cyan dot that's right in the middle of the eye is what you're going to place inside the center where the pupil is. So just in case your little eye selector is, we're just going to make it crazy and we're going to move it off. Just in case your little eye selector has been pushed off and it's not above the eye, you want to click and drag it into place by using the little cyan dot in the middle. Once I click and drag that into the center of the eye, then I want to re 
situate all of the control points around the eye. So just in case it doesn't, it doesn't show up right in the middle there, don't worry about it. That happens all the time. Um, you just click and drag that little cyan dot and center it out. Now, once we're done with the control points, we want to go up to the top right-hand corner of our screen and we want to click on hide controls. And now we don't have to stare at the control points while we're making any excess editing. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go in and we want to hit up the skin retouching pane. The skin retouching pane here is where you're going to do all of your basic, your your very, very basic baseline retouching. So we have a blemish removal slider that's already been pushed up to 50% and a smoothing slider that's been pushed up to 20 and then an evenness slider that's been pushed up to 20 as well. Now I want to zero this out for you guys so you can see kind of our before and after and so we can do all of these individually. Sometimes the baseline works really well, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on what you're looking for. Now, the first slider that I always recommend that you use is the blemish slider. And the blemish slider goes in and it kind of acts, it acts, it goes in and it, it it's almost like a concealer where it fills in a lot of the, the little fine lines, the pores and so on. And it, it kind of acts as not just a smoother, but reducing some of the creases and some of the spots in the face. The blemish slider is always what I like to use before I hit the smoothing slider. So we'll take that and we'll move it over to the right and you'll see it's just lightly reducing the shadows underneath her eyes and those lines. It's, it's lightly reducing some of the pores on her cheeks and on her forehead. So it's a very subtle tool, but it can make a world of difference. So we'll move that over. The smoothing slider is what I like to use next. And this is very, very basic. All it does is it goes in and it smooths out the skin. Now you wanna be very careful with the smoothing slider because you can go overboard very easily. So obviously we don't want to smooth her skin this much. This is starting to look fake. We don't want to, we don't want to make her look like she's overly photoshopped. So I like to keep my smoothing slider underneath 30. That's usually, that's usually where I sit. And that's usually the best option, at least for me anyways. I've never gone over, I don't think I've ever gone over 30. So I like to keep the smoothing slider lower and I like to keep the blemish slider a little bit higher. higher. Now underneath, there are a couple other sliders that I'll talk about, but we won't really need with this image. The first is the shine reducer, and it goes in and it reduces shine on someone's face, especially if they have kind of like a, you always get someone who has kind of like a shine spot right on their forehead, or maybe like right on the tip of their nose or on their cheeks. And this shine slider can help reduce that effect a little bit. And it just goes in and it helps fill out some of those areas. Now for this image, she doesn't really have excessive shine on her face, so it's not gonna do anything, but play around with this slider can be really, really useful. We have a shadow slider here, which goes in and it, it lightens up some of the darker shadows in the skin. So if you have someone that has really dark under eyes or maybe has, I don't know, maybe a shadow on the right hand side of their face that you wanna lighten up a little bit, whatever it may be, the shadow slider acts as kind of a shadow recovery tool. So if we move that over to the right, it's again, not gonna do that much to this image because there aren't really any heavy shadows on her face. Um, but this can be a good tool to help reduce the under eyes if they're really intense. And then under here is the texture slider. The texture slider helps add in a skin-like texture if you've over smoothed, or if you have an image where someone is a little blown out. Um, I typically, by keeping the smoothing a little bit lower and the blemish slider up a little bit, I don't usually add in skin texture personally, um, but the, the slider is there just in case you wanna add it in. And then the last slider here is the evenness slider. And this is my favorite. And I think it's one of the best ones in the in the entire program. I use it on pretty much every image that I pop in here. The evenness slider reduces color variance in the skin tone. So it looks at your overall skin tone on the face and it pays attention to all of the different color tones in your face. And it helps reduce things like rosacea. Um, uh, if you have someone who has kind of a really intense blush on and you want to reduce that effect, if you've got someone who's got kind of like acne scars and you want to reduce that kind of redness on the, on the scars, this helps reduce the color difference in a someone's skin tone. Now you have to be careful with this, even a slider. I rarely ever go over about 20 or 30. Again, I like to keep this light. If I move it over to the right too far, you'll see it completely flattens out the skin and then you lose a little bit of that color depth. There, is, there aren't that many people out there who have completely flat skin color-wise. 
And if they do, congratulations, and they don't need perfect portrait. But most people just need a little bit of evenness to help reduce it, but you can still keep their natural features in there. Um, I had someone ask if, if it would be a tool that you could use to eradicate freckles, and I guess you could, but I don't really know why you'd want to get rid of freckles. Um, I love freckles. So it's a, it's a good way to reduce the color of, of bright red spots, but it doesn't completely remove the texture. So remember, this is just a color-based slider. Now, underneath is the color correction tool, which color corrects your image based on skin tone instead of white point. So it looks at your photo and it pays attention to the skin that it's gone in and selected, and then it, it uses that as a baseline to correct the color. Now, again, for this image, we won't really need it, um, but it will do it automatically for you if you have an image that was maybe shot indoors or um, outside and the color's kind of funky or whatever it may be. If the color's kind of funky and you pop it in here, it'll color correct based on the skin tone of the people in your image. And then last, you have the eyes and mouth pane. Again, it's applied some baseline amount of adjustments. It's got a whitening slider for the eyes. So let's let's move all of these sliders over to the left and we're going to start from we're going to start from scratch. The whitening slider just pumps up the brightness of the eyes and this can be a good tool if you have someone especially if they're in shadow. I've noticed this a lot. If you have the light coming down and the eyes look a little dark just overall, this can be really good to help pump up the whites of the eyes to make it look like they're a little bit brighter. So we'll just take that slider and move it over to the right. And I always like to keep it pretty low. I don't like to go overboard with that. Next, you have a detail slider, which adds detail, contrast, and vibrance into the irises of the eyes. It's this like magic little thing, this magic tool that goes in and it just pumps up the irises. And I really, really like this tool. It works really well and it's really fun to use. Underneath, we have a reduce red eye option here, which allows you to reduce red eye because it's already selected the eyes, so it knows where the eyes are. So instead of having to go in and try and select the part of the image that you need to reduce red eye, all you have to do is check that box and it'll do it for you. And then we've got the mouse section. We've got the teeth whitening, which I can move to the right to brighten up her teeth a little bit. And then we can take a vibrance slider and we can add a little bit of vibrance back into her lip color. Now, she already has really, really nice kind of reddish pink lips, so I don't really want to use the vibrant slider, but it's really fun, especially if you have someone who has kind of a duller lip color and you want to pump it up a little bit. It's always a good slider to use. Now, the before I do anything else in Perfect Portrait, I want to go up to my preset menu, and I want to save this as a preset. Now, I, I like to mention presets mostly because when you come up with a good formula, so this formula is pretty good for me. The smoothing is down a little bit, the evenness is up a little bit, the all of the the whitening eyes and the whitening T sliders are both down because I think that the the baselines are a little harsh, but I up the detail in the irises of the eyes because I want to pump those out a little bit more. This is a good baseline for me. I, I much prefer this over the baseline that Perfect Portrait starts out with. Perfect Portrait starts out with a great one. It's a good way to see what your image could look like with, with a lot of retouching on it. But I, I like to go with a slightly lighter baseline. And that's just, that's personal and that's what I like. So I can go in and save all of the changes that I just made on the right hand side as a preset. And then the next time I upload an image of the same bride or maybe another bride and I want to start out with my own baseline, I can use a preset. So if I go to the preset menu and I choose save preset, I can give it a name. So we'll call this general wedding preset. And I'll place it in my weddings category. I'll type in a creator and a description. So nice and nice and easy. We'll click create. And now on the left hand side of my screen, I'll go to my presets and open up weddings and you'll see I've got general wedding preset. I've got a Jessica wedding preset and then a new wedding baseline preset. And the wedding baseline preset is very similar to the general wedding preset. Now let's go ahead and let's just, I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to reset all of the different changes. We're going to reset and reset and we're going to drop everything down to zero. So when you start out with a new image and you bring it into Perfect Portrait and it adds those baseline amounts of changes and you want to add your preset 
all you do is click on it on the left hand side and it'll go in and it'll add whatever changes you made with that preset. So in the skin retouching pane, my blemish, my smoothing, and my evenness sliders are all the same. And now my, in my eyes and mouth pane, my whitening detail, whitening, and vibrant sliders are all the same as what I had just created. So now I like this baseline a lot better than the one that Perfect Portrait had originally created. And so if I want to, let's say I had a different image open and I need to add just a little bit more smoothing or a little less evenness to this person, I've got a better baseline that I like instead of what perfect portrait may add the first time around. So I, I like to suggest creating presets. Some people like to do more smoothing and they like to make sure that they reduce shine. Or some people like to go in and they like to whiten the eyes and brighten the, brighten the teeth a lot more than I do. And that's totally up to you. So it just depends on what you're doing. But presets can cut down a lot of editing time in the program. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about here inside the Perfect Portrait module before we move on to something else is the retouch brush. And the retouch brush is kind of what you're going to use when you have to finish off your portrait. So for the most part, this skin smoothing, softening evenness is doing a pretty good job, but there are still a couple tiny, tiny, tiny little areas I want to get rid of. I want to go in and retouch. Now we have a retouch brush here inside Perfect Portrait that works, if you're a Photoshop user, it's very similar to the way the spot healing brush works. All you need to do is just select your brush and click and drag over the areas that you want to remove and it will remove them. Now she doesn't have a lot of blemishes. I can remove some of the freckles maybe on her shoulder down here, but for the most part, she actually has a pretty, pretty solid, she doesn't have any pimples, she doesn't have any zits, there's nothing on there that I really need to get rid of. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger and I want to remove the under eye circles here. Now, if I click and drag and remove the under eye circles at 100%, which I'm going to do so you can see it, it's freaky weird. It doesn't do a very good job. She looks flat. She looks weird. Um, now she has absolutely no dimension underneath her eyes. Not good. So I'm going to undo that. And the shortcut command for undo is command or control Z will undo and I'm going to go up to my tool options bar with the retouch brush selected and I'm going to reduce the opacity or the strength of the brush down to about 30 or 40. Now the reason why I do that is because we want to reduce the under eye circles but we want to do it slowly. We want to soften them without completely getting rid of them. Now that seems a little weird and I know some people some people disagree with me on this one and that's totally fine. It's up to you. Your portrait editing is your portrait editing. But I always like to reduce the opacity of the brush so that you can still see the under eye circles. So she still has some depth and dimension underneath her eyes, but it's not completely removed. It's not completely gone. When you remove them 100%, they look fake. The people in the image just look fake. The only people I know who don't have under eye circles are like, you know, t high schoolers and teenagers. And they still haven't grown into themselves. And then they're going to get older and they're going to get a job and they're going to get under eye circles. But... For the most part, people have these under eye circles and if you remove them, they're, they're going to look like they've been overly retouched. So I always like to reduce them and soften them without completely removing them. Now, once I'm done in here and I click apply, it's gonna put me back into Lightroom. And now I'll have my edited image right next to, right next to my original image. So here's our before and here's our after. Now, one of the best parts about working with pretty much any file type at this point is Perfect Portrait places all of its adjustments on a separate layer. So if I take this image into Perfect Layers, if I take it into um, Photoshop, I'll have my original photo layer underneath my Perfect Portrait layer. So you always have the ability of deleting that layer and starting again from scratch. So automatic placement on another layer. Now, let's go ahead and zoom out here. And I'm going to go over to our portrait section. And I want to go in and I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the other, other perfect portrait or other portrait changes that you can make outside of perfect portrait. Whew. I don't know why it's so hard for me. Perfect portrait is very hard to say, especially if you say it really fast. So I want to go in and I want to make a couple of changes to this portrait and I want to do it inside perfect effects, and perfect layers. So I want to show you how to use some of the other programs in the suite to make some very subtle 
portrait changes. So let's take this image and I'm going to go to the file menu in Lightroom this time, go to plugin extras, and I'm going to choose the perfect photo suite. And now I can use the entire program as kind of like a standalone plugin. And I like to do this a lot so that I don't have to constantly go back and forth between effects in Lightroom and then portrait in Lightroom and then resize in Lightroom or whatever programs I may be using. Now here inside perfect layers, I've got this image and you'll notice on the left hand side of my screen, my retouch brush is here. If you don't want to have to go into Perfect Portrait and do the whole wham, bam, shabam in Perfect Portrait, you have a retouch brush here inside Perfect Layers. Now, this image, let's say she wanted it to stay really, really, really natural. All she wanted were you to remove her blemishes, but she wanted to keep the, the actual skin tone, and she wanted to keep a lot, of, a lot of the portrait pretty natural. She didn't want any excessive smoothing. You can always just jump right into Layers to use that retouch brush. So I have it selected on the left-hand side. If you're using an image, what I suggest if you bring it into perfect layers is to go over to your layer stack and click on the copy button. This will duplicate your original background layer and now all of your editing changes will be made on a duplicate layer. This means that you can delete them just in case you exit out of the program and your client doesn't like it and they want you to start again or maybe she decides she wants more retouching later, you can always go back and erase your retouching layer and then come back and redo it. So the copy button inside the layer stack is a really, really great save. And you can actually even go in and you can rename that layer just by double clicking on the layer. And I'll just type in retouching. And now I have my retouching layer on top of my original headshot layer. Now that we've done that, I'm just gonna take my retouch brush. I'm gonna go up to my tool options bar and for now I'm gonna turn off the clone stamp brush off it, op, option. And I just wanna click and drag over some of the bigger blemishes here. So little, little tiny spots, little areas, very small, basic retouching, nothing, nothing excessive and nothing very big. Now I can always reduce the opacity of my brush if I want to do the little under eye trick. I can use our clone stamp brush, which if you wanna know a little bit more about, we have an awesome video online all about using the clone stamp brush. I'm not using it right now because I'm just doing super quick, super fast stuff. Now once I've gone through and I've taken out any of the, the excess blemishes, the ones that were pretty obvious, now I'm going to take it into Perfect Portrait, and I want to show you a couple of a couple of the retouching tools that are nestled away into Perfect Effects. So I'll click on Perfect Effects in the top right hand corner, and it pops me in here. Now on the left hand side of my screen, inside Perfect Effects, if we scroll down, there are two portrait categories: Portrait Retouch and Portrait Enhance. So let's start out in Portrait Retouch. Now we've got two different auto options. We've got an auto portrait fixer and an auto auto skin smoother. I typically don't recommend using either of the auto options. I always like to do everything myself and I like to do it all by hand, which could be a statement on, on the kind of person I am. If you want to do the automatic, go for it. But I like to do everything, everything on my own. I like to do everything by hand. It makes me feel better because I have complete control over the image and I like that. It's one of the many reasons I love editing. So we've got four options that you can use to go in and you can do a magic eye fixer, a skin shine reduction, you have a tanning booth option if you want to give someone a little bit of a tan, and then you have a toothbrush tooth whitening option. Now the first one that I usually start with is the magic eye fixer. I'm just going to click on this option here. Now one of the one of the best parts about using all of these effects that have the little brush in the top left hand corner is it means that they are paint in effects. That means that it applies the effect on my entire image and then adds a black mask to hide the effect until I paint it in to the areas I want it to be painted into. So you'll see in my effects stack on the right hand side, my little, my little magic eye fixer layer has a black mask. It's waiting for me to paint in the areas that I want to. Now, one of the things that I'm going to suggest when you're using, actually, when you're using Perfect Portrait, and this is not a, this is not something you have to have. It's something that I like to use. When I do a lot of portrait editing, I like to use a Wacom tablet. And a lot of people ask me whether Wacom works with Perfect Photo Suite. We do. 
And a lot of people always ask whether I use Wacom tablets, and I, I definitely do. I use it for all of my personal portrait editing. I actually got to the studio today about an hour and a half early, and I did a whole bunch of portrait editing for a friend of mine. So I was using my tablet, and I have it co connected to my computer. And I really like to use this when I'm doing my portrait editing. It makes everything a lot easier. Now, I swap between a mouse and a Wac Wacom tablet on a regular basis, but I really just think that it helps quite a bit. Now, I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to click and paint over the eyes. Now, I don't have the perfect brush selected right now, and our perfect brush is our edge detection brush. Now, luckily with the Wacom tablet, I don't really need the perfect brush right now. It's doing a really good job on its own. So we'll just click and paint over the eyes. And now I'm going to turn this layer on and off so you guys can see the before and after. Here's my original image, and here's my after. It adds a little bit of contrast, a little bit of brightness, and a little bit of detail to the irises and the whites of the eyes. Now one of the best parts about working with perfect effects here is you can take the amount slider, because this is way too intense with the rest of the image, and we'll just take that amount slider and we're going to move it down to the left. And it'll reduce the effect just a little bit, so that her eyes are still a tad brighter, but they're not overboard. So we'll probably keep it at about 60 or 70%. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna click on the Add button in my effects stack, and we're gonna add, a, let's add the toothbrush layer. And I wanna whiten up her teeth just a little bit. So again, I'll select the toothbrush layer. It's a paint in effect, which means that it applies the effect with a black mask, and then I can paint in where I want to whiten her teeth. So we'll just click and drag over her teeth here. Her teeth are already pretty white because she has really nice teeth. So it's not going to make that much of a difference, but we're just clicking and painting over her teeth here. And it's pulling out any, any leftover yellowness. And there we go. Now, again, with the toothbrush layer, I always like to reduce it just a little bit because it's kind of, it, it can flatten just a little bit. And I always like to make sure I don't, I don't flatten out the teeth. I want to make sure they still have some color dimension to them because teeth are white, yes, but most people don't have solid white teeth. Even people have really nice white teeth, their teeth are, still have a little bit of dimension. So the toothbrush, I, I recommend going down quite a bit with it because it can flatten out the tones in the teeth. So just be careful with that one. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on the Add button and I want to show you how the Auto Skin Smoother works here inside Perfect Effects just so that you know what it is. So I'll click on Auto Skin Smoother, and it goes in and it pays attention to all of the skin tone colors in your image, and it smooths them out just a little bit. Now, what you can do is select the masking brush on the left-hand side of your screen, and you can just paint out all of the areas that you don't want the skin smoothing. So this, this tool works well, but a lot of times if you have someone who has, who has, um, blonde hair, or you have someone who has is up against a, a background that's similar to a, a, a skin color, whatever it may be, you may have to paint out some of the areas of your image. And this is pretty, this is pretty typical. So I'll just take my masking brush tool and I'm going to click and paint out all of the areas that I don't want to be blurred. So we don't want her hair to be blurred anywhere up here. I want to make sure that I don't over blur areas like her eyebrows because that would be kind of weird if her eyebrows were really blurred. And I'll probably paint over areas like her eyes to make sure those aren't blurred and so on. So when you add the auto skin smoother, I always recommend that you go back in and you paint over the areas that you don't want to be smoothed most of the time. And one of the reasons why I don't use it very often is because it does go overboard. So you'll see it, it, it softened a whole bunch of the, the image on the, the bottom part of the photo, and I don't really want to smooth out too much on her chest and on her, on her shoulder. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to paint those out and make sure that it doesn't smooth any of those areas. Now once I've done my mask and I've painted out those spots, again I can take the amount slider and I can reduce it just a little bit so it's not quite too strong. And there we go. Now, just in three very, very short steps here inside Perfect Effects, I've gone from my original image to a very lightly edited image. There is barely any 
changes on this photo. It is very, very subtle. And now that I'm in perfect, perfect effects, I can add a, a new effect layer and I can go in and I can enhance this in other ways. But one of the reasons why I recommend, sh I always like to show the perfect effects options is because they're very subtle changes. And again, if you have someone who doesn't want a lot of changes, doesn't want a lot of skin smoothing or, or teeth whitening or brightening, they want their portraits to be a little bit, a little bit more natural, this is a great way to do it. And then you're already here inside perfect effects. So you can go in and you can add a vintage layer. So if this person really wanted a cool effect on top of their photo, you can go in and you can add your awesome new vintage layer. So whatever you whatever you may be doing with this image, you can go in and you can make any other adjustments here inside perfect effects because you're already in the program as it is. So that is a quick overview of very, very basic portrait retouching here inside the Perfect Photo Suite. So we talked about perfect portrait, perfect layers, and perfect effects today. It's one of the reasons why I don't call this just a perfect portrait, perfect portrait webinar. I like to call this a portrait editing webinar because I cover so many different things. Now it's about 10.05, and I've been talking to you guys for about 35 to 40 minutes, and there's about 10 minutes left. It looks like there are see if I can see. It looks like there are a couple questions in the questions panel. So I'm going to open that up right now so I can actually read those questions and I'll go through and answer as many as I can. So if there's anything you guys want to know about what I've done inside any of these programs, feel free to ask and I'll spend the next 15 minutes or so just talking through some of these questions for you guys. And really quickly before some of you guys leave, just in case you want to see a little bit more about portrait editing, let me go back really quick. On our webinar page, we have the advanced guide to portrait editing at 11 o'clock today. So it starts in about 55 minutes. And if you want to take a little bit more of an in-depth look at perfect portrait, um, creating personalized presets that are specific to portraits inside perfect effects, and then we're going to be talking about some of the re more of the retouching tools inside of perfect layers. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about how to stack layers inside the layer stack. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, a little bit more in-depth information about all the stuff that I talked about today, I'm going to be doing that in about an hour. So if you guys want to stick around and I'll be talking about some more advanced work inside the perfect photo suite and it's all here on the same day. So it's nice. You can do it all in one fell swoop. So just in case that's on our website, onwinsoftware.com live demo webinars, the advanced guide to portrait editing with Liz LePage. All right, questions. Let's go and answer some questions. All right, so, oh, it looks like there was a question about, are you using a tablet or a mouse? I answered that question. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I answered it anyways. Um, is there a keyboard stroke to show before and after? Yes, there is actually. So if you're in perfect, Actually, if you're in any program, the keyboard sh shortcut for showing your before or after is Control P on a PC or Command P on a Mac. So Command P, this is my original photo, no changes to it whatsoever, no eye fixers, toothbrushes, or skin smoothers. And then if I press Command P one more time, this is my after image. And I can actually turn, let's delete the vintage layer there. So you can actually see a better before and after. Here's my original image and here's my after. So very subtle changes. They're almost hard to see, but they help soften out things just a little bit. Okay. There is a question by adding the additional layers in the quick retouching techniques used. Are you increasing the file size? I am. Um, that is one of the dangers of doing retouching particularly the way that I do it, my image files tend to be pretty large. Now, one of the best parts about doing very basic retouching in both Perfect Portrait and Perfect Effects is your file sizes are going to be dramatically less than if you do a heavy amount of retouching in Photoshop. And I have, I have, done, I have done a lot of, um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is I'm trying to get I'm trying to get even better at portrait retouching. And so I spend a lot of my personal time, I, I take a lot of headshots, actors' headshots, uh, corporate headshots, um, just basic portraits. And so I do a lot of retouching work. And one of the things that I've worked on is doing retouching in both 
uh, the photo suite and in Photoshop. And the same thing that I would do in Photoshop inside the suite, my file size tends to be quite a bit smaller. And it's because we do condense a lot of the retouching on one layer. So if I take all of these perfect effects changes that I just made and I click the apply button, it's going to put me back into perfect layers and it's going to squish all three of those effects into one layer for me. And that helps reduce the file size by quite a bit as well. So we, we try and condense the layered workflow a little bit. Um, if you like to have a huge excessive layered workflow, go for it. Um, but we try and condense everything to make those file sizes just a little bit smaller. Um, so this image is quite a bit smaller retouching it here in the photo suite than you, you would have it inside um, Photoshop. But it does add a little bit of additional information. All right. Um, how can you brighten one tooth? So if you're inside perfect effects, the way that I would suggest doing this is I've got this image and let's say I want to brighten the teeth. I'm going to go to the left hand side of my screen and you'll see that there's a basic brushes category here. Now the basic brushes is very similar to the, the effects that I was showing you before. You have to brush in the part of the image that you want to be darker or lighter or cooler or whatever it may be. Now the one that I suggest, there is brush in highlights and brush lighter. And those are probably the two that you're going to want to play, play around with. So let's just choose brush in highlights here. And I'll click on this effect and it doesn't do anything to my image until I paint it in. Now once I add that effect, I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start painting over the teeth. Now, one of the great things about working with perfect effects, let's undo that really quick, is you have access to the perfect brush, which is our edge detection brush. And the perfect brush allows you to have a little bit better of a, a mask edge. So it goes in and it pays attention to things like um, tonal and color information. And so now I'll click and drag. And with the, with the perfect brush selected, it's actually doing a pretty good job of separating the teeth from like the gums and the I'm going in we'll we'll do it on the bottom layer too and we'll brighten up some of those teeth just a little bit and even with that tiny little brush it's still going in and only lightening up the the teeth and now instead of whitening the teeth I've just brightened them and I can take the amount slider and I can move this around if it's way too harsh you can also if you want to just lighten up one tooth you can just go in and you can individually paint in whichever tooth you want um, so that's how I would brighten up teeth. This doesn't whiten, it just brightens. The whitening option that I suggest is definitely in the portrait retouch category called toothbrush. And that does a great job of whitening and brightening all at the same time. All right, let's see. We've got a couple other questions in here. Um, can you add control points in perfect portrait? No, you cannot. So the control points are the way they are and you can't go in and you can't add them. And that is one of the downsides of, of using those control points. But for the most part, it does a pretty good job, at least what I've noticed. Um, sometimes if you have someone who has a, a head that's turned by quite a bit, it can be a little bit more challenging. But for the most part, it does a pretty good job with those control points. But unfortunately, no, you cannot add them. All right, so there's actually this is a really really great question um i was recently taking pictures of a model with a lot of shine from hot lights and there was also a magenta hue on her forehead i was able to deal with the shine but couldn't get rid of the hue do you have any suggestions i actually have an awesome suggestion because i've dealt with this before so inside inside perfect effects a very large portion of of editing um in this program <laughs> I do inside Perfect Effects, which is very strange, I know, but Perfect Effects is an amazing program. So here inside Perfect Effects, let's say I want to reduce the redness on her cheeks. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an empty layer. And then I'm going to go to my Effect Options pane. Now in the Effect Options pane, this is where you can kind of build your own presets from the ground up. So I'm going to open up the Effect drop-down menu and I'm going to choose the Color Enhancer. Now, once I have this selected, this is what I would use to reduce some sort of color-based problem in an image. If you open up the color range drop-down menu and you go down, you can choose which color you want to reduce, which color you want to desaturate, lighten, or darken, whatever it may be. So let's select the red channel, not the orange channel, the red channel. 
And I'm just gonna take the saturation slider and I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Now you'll notice that it's completely reducing the red in her cheeks. Now I can take the lightness slider and I can either darken it or lighten it if I want to. So if I wanna brighten up her cheeks a little bit, I can take the lightness slider. And then we can also take the hue slider if we wanna change the hue just a little bit. If I wanna make them a little bit more orange to match the rest of her skin, I can do that. Now what I need to do is I need to paint that effect in to just the part of the image that I'm having the problem. So that would be with our masking brush. And I want to take my mode and swap it over to paint out. And I'm just going to paint out the rest of the image. And we're going to remove that change from the rest of my photo. And we're only going to have it affect part of my image. So we'll just click and we'll paint around all of this part of the photo. It's not really doing that much to the outside, but you know, just in case it's doing anything. We're just going to remove that effect from my image. All right. So now that I've kind of isolated it to the cheeks, I can go in and I can be a little bit more specific about which parts of the image I want it to be removed from. So, you know, let's say we also would want it on the nose or we'd want it a little bit on the area leading up to the cheeks or whatever it may be. Now that we've gone through and we've signaled out the cheeks, I can go in and I can hone in those changes just a little bit. So we could make that even lighter and we could bring the, bring the color up just a little bit and we could change the hue again from a different color. I can add blush in if I want to by changing the color tone. Um, so this effect this color enhancer layer is really, really useful. Now the changes don't seem that harsh, but if I turn this layer on and off, here's my original image. Here's my after. It looks natural. It still seems to match the skin tone to the rest of the image. It's reduced that red effect so her cheeks aren't quite so pink and it's brightened it up just a little bit so it doesn't get too dull. All by going to the color enhancer layer and playing around with the red sliders. It's amazing how much perfect effects can do if you if you really know how to hone yourself into it. So this is a problem that that a lot of people have, especially when it comes to fixing like um, a tone on the skin tone. So by reducing the colors and playing around with the lightness and the hue, you can completely change the tone of someone's face. And it looks like there was a question about what about toning or fixing an area other than the face. This is how I would suggest doing that. Um, I would play around with that color enhancer layer and I would play around with reducing, reducing the saturation of specific colors. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could reduce the, the effect of the color on her green shirt. If I didn't like that, I could choose another color enhancer layer, paint in just over those little lines of her, of her halter shirt, and I could reduce all of the greens and the blues in the image. And I could reduce that color effect. So this tool works across the board for multiple different parts of an image. It doesn't just work for things like cheeks or facial toning. It works for just about anything in your image. And with access to that perfect brush, you can be a little bit more exact. With this image, I didn't need it. I, was, I wanted to be very subtle about those changes. So having a little bit of a feathering around the edge was perfect. Um, but this tool works across the board for so many things.